I spent the last couple of weeks trying to figure out why my computer was crashing literally every 15 minutes while I was streaming, crash, while I was recording, crash. While I was FaceTiming my grandma, trying to show her that no grandma, this picture is not real. Donald Trump did not have lunch with Jesus, crash. Now it is important to note that there was a long period of time that every time I walked into my office and touched any of the various tripods in my studio, I would get electrically shocked and then the computer would turn itself on. This will matter later in the video. And while I could have just bought a new computer, I am a famous YouTuber after all, I am a hacker and I feel like it'd be cheating if I were just to pick up the PC, throw it in the dumpster and buy a new one. Now I moved into this house about a year ago and I have this entire room dedicated to just YouTube stuff. I'm I'm very lucky and that I get to kind of have my own YouTube studio. And so to do this, I built my own computer. I got the new Intel i9 processor. I got the newest 64 gigabytes of RAM. I got an Asus motherboard. I was all good to go. And that computer has treated me well for the last couple of months until the Intel issue. For those of you that don't know, Intel, the CPU manufacturer, has been the subject of a lot of controversy in the last year because of two main issues with their 13th and 14th gen CPUs. Inside your CPU, there's a thing called microcode. Microcode is basically the OS inside the CPU that tells it how to operate, how to interpret the instructions that get sent to run code. And there was an issue with the microcode of the 13th and 14th gen processors that would cause the CPU to ask for too much voltage and effectively destroy itself. This issue is fixable and was fixable in a microcode patch that came out about a year ago, but there was another issue also found with the same line of processors, 13th and 14th gen, where there was also a corrosion issue where effectively, I guess somebody at like the Intel factory left the humidifier in the break room on and it got to the factory floor. I'm making that up, but it's kind of funny. So not only was the overvoltage causing there to be a voltage issue that would degrade the CPU, it was also physically falling apart. There was a huge question of whether or not Intel would RMA return to manufacturer these CPU use and ultimately people were just kind of pissed. Now what you're probably realizing and what I realized as I began to have these crashing issues is that, oh God, I have one of those CPUs. Okay, so this is easy. All I have to do is get a CPU. And again, while CPUs aren't super cheap, this will be a quick and easy replacement that will allow me to fix my computer without replacing the almost $3,000 rig that I bought. Surely this will be an easy fix. And I figured, I'll treat myself. I'll get the top of the line CPU. It's still 14th gen, but this is a new version of the 14th gen that doesn't have the same corrosion issues. We should be good to go. Is this fix, fix the corrosion issue? Yes? No? No idea? Okay, good. Awesome, thanks. With my new $500 CPU in the computer, you would think that my issues were gone. So to celebrate, I went live on twitch.tv. We were gonna do a little hacking stream. I was gonna fuzz some software that I thought was interesting. Just like before, 15 minutes into my stream, my stream crashed with another blue screen that actually happened in the HDMI capture card of my CPU. But the problem here is that all the blue screens were happening in different areas of the computer. First, it was a kernel mode security crash, which made me think I was getting hacked by the Chinese. And then another one was just some unhandled kernel mode exception. And then this one was a page fault in the kernel mode driver for the HDMI capture card. So either something has completely corrupted all of the software on my computer or the new CPU CPU also has a corrosion bug that was fixed eight months ago, or there's a deeper issue. I need you to empathize with how insane I was going. I had been having these crashes at this point for almost two months straight. I couldn't go live on Twitch. And every time I tried to record a YouTube video, I would have to like, but -da -da -ba -da -da -ba -da -da -ba, and then press save and then like, wait, and then but -da -ba -da -ba -da -da -ba, save and then wait, because I had had so many instances of in the middle of a recording, it would crash the computer and not like a crash, like Premiere would crash or OBS would crash. I would get a B sod and lose all of my progress. And also when you're recording an OBS, if you're recording in the MP4 format, that is a non-recoverable format, which means if you don't gracefully end the recording session, you just lose your video. So I was basically shit out of luck for two months. You can go look at my YouTube upload history. I went very, very quiet for most of like January, February, because I, could, I couldn't do anything, man. I was completely useless. Remember how I said at the beginning of the video that for a while, when I came into my office, if I touched a tripod in my office, it would shock me and then the CPU would come up. Remember how I said that? Every time I walked into my office and touched any of the various tripods in my studio, I would get electrically shocked and then the computer would turn itself on. The reason for this is actually the primary cause of the entire issue that I had. 
on the CPU that I use for streaming, I used to have these two pieces of RAM on the CPU. They're G-Skill Ripjaw S5 DDR5 RAM. It's two 32 gigabyte sticks of RAM. And these on their own are probably fine sticks of RAM. I have no issue with these individually, but apparently uh, with the exact model of motherboard that I have, the Asus Z90, Z790 Wi-Fi, and these sticks of RAM, it just, oops, creates a grounding issue that will randomly cause a bit to flip in the RAM. The, the way that memory works is the CPU will put things inside of these sticks and when programs run, it will put the me memory there. It will ask for the memory back. This is the fundamentals of all computing. And speaking of the fundamentals, it's time for a message from our sponsor, me. If you're a programmer or a cybersecurity specialist, I fundamentally believe that it is extremely important to know how computers work at a fundamental level. All of my courses on my site, Low Level Academy, are designed to teach you the basics of how computers work through a language like C or assembly by using either the C programming language to build a project or maybe write some network code where you let the network talk to the program and digest that data. All these courses give you bite-sized lessons where you learn something new over the course of time to make you a better programmer. Oh, and by the way, it's on sale. This is the best way you can support me on this channel. Go check out Low Level Academy and let's get back to the video. After eight hours of testing my RAM, it turns out that this stick, stick number two, if you wrote to a specific physical memory address, oops, it would just flip the memory at that location. This is a short video. This video is not gonna be very long, but I wanna make you understand that the process of debugging, is it software? Is it CPU? Is it physical RAM? Was such an arduous pain in the dick that I cannot, I cannot accurately describe it. The tripod issue was basically all of the pieces in my office to include the tripod, this mount here, the boom mic, all of these components eventually in some form or fashion touch my computer. So if there's a grounding issue in the computer, it will manifest in the metal rods that are around my office. So every time I came into my office, the computer had charged up some static electricity because of a grounding issue caused by this RAM. And when I touched that metal rod in the tripod, it would ground the electricity onto me and that would cause a wake up signal to the CPU that would then turn the CPU on and cause my CPU to run. Now, eventually the kernel would be running. It'd be taking memory, putting it inside and outside of RAM. And eventually when it went to like preserve a stack frame of where the return address was supposed to go, when it went to retrieve that return address from RAM, it would get back a different address causing security issues, page faults, and just general unhandled exceptions. So the last final test that I had to run, and trust me, if this didn't work, I would have lost my marbles, was to go back to Best Buy, get some new RAM, and just pray to the CPU gods that this would solve the issue. Awesome, thanks. And so yes, luckily I got two new sticks of Corsair Vengeance RAM, 32 gigs, put it into the CPU. I ran another mem test test and then ta-da, no over here, ta-da, uh, it passed. It did not fail. The memory is good and I have not had a crash since. I've recorded this entire video in one shot and nothing has failed yet. Please. Now, the reason that I'm making this video, the, the going back to the packaging of the video, the title and the thumbnail is, is technology getting worse? Are computers getting less reliable? The reason I wanted to make this video is because I was so upset about the process here. Remember, I paid roughly $3,000 for the computer down there that I now use in my studio for YouTube and my business and everything that isn't my actual day job in my other office around the other side of the house. Not everyone is technically savvy, right? It should not take a person who's literally a security engineer, an electrical engineer to fix these issues. My mother-in-law, for example, my mother-in-law called us one time and she said, hey guys, my computer had a virus, but it's okay. Apple called me and took care of it. And I'm like, wait a minute, did, did Apple call you or did you call Apple and they dealt with it? Well, no, no, no. The guy at Apple called me and he said, hey ma'am, you have a virus, but it's okay. Just give me your password and we'll be good to go. And so I quickly realized that she had been fished. That was a whole thing we had to deal with. Eventually I just bought her a new laptop. But the point I'm trying to make is that these CPU issues are so just frustrating because the average person, my mother-in-law for one example, or my grandma who just wants to play Mahjong Tile, are people who should be able to just buy products and get the thing that they want. And when it doesn't work out of the package because oops, sorry, we left the humidifier on in the office or, 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 or Tim over microwaved his fish, for example, just makes me irrationally upset. This is my old computer. We call her Bessie. 
say, I love you, Bessie, in the comments. Bessie is a computer that I built after I, got, after I left college in 2016. Underneath this water pump is a 7th gen Intel processor and this random like $30 RAM I got off Newegg and a normal like very cheapo motherboard and this used to be a 1070 GPU. I built this computer for I think $1,600 at the time and it has lasted me with no issues, no hardware failures, no crashes for nine beautiful years and actually it still works perfectly and the only reason I upgraded the CPU is because it doesn't have TPM, the trusted platform module a requirement now of uh, Windows 11. Is technology getting worse? Are computers getting more and more unreliable? If Bessie can do it, so can you. And that's it now, guys. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this style of video, type more like this in the comments to validate my ego. And then go check out this video that I think you will also enjoy. Aladdin got hacked and it was pretty cool. We'll see you there. Okay. All right. Okay. Get out of here. Okay. <coughs>